once more into the haunted hinterlands. Welcome to Goose Creek. I have history here beginning 40 years back with liminal magics, cryptids, possession. The landscape has changed, but the scars remain. Let me share with you now one of the stories from the Satanic Panic. Late Autumn, 1983, 13 high school kids drove out to a secluded area in the Missoula State Forest and performed a ritual from the so-called Simon Necronomicon. What follows are some of the highlights. A large number of us used to eat lunch together in the school cafeteria, our ages ranging from 13 to 17. Most were band and orchestra kids. Most of us played D&D &D and read Lovecraft and Howard. One day, as a joke, a couple of us performed a ritual sacrifice of a hostess snack cake. Students called us the Ho-Ho Killers. It was funny, at least to a bunch of teenagers. No harm was done or intended. We talked and joked a lot about magic and the occult. It was the height of the satanic panic after all, and we were feeling particularly attacked by the adults and some peers in our communities for the music we listened to, the games we played, and the books we read. One day, one of our group brought in the Simon Necronomicon, a slim mass market paperback published by Avon on my birthday three years before. It was a mishmash of H.P. Lovecraft, Aleister Crowley, and Sumerian mythology that played into Wilson and Shay's Illuminatus trilogy as well. It'd be years before I learned the real history behind the book. For us, at that lunch table, it was as close to a real grimoire as we'd ever come across. We decided, then and there, to perform one of the rituals from the book. Fall break was coming up, and we knew the perfect place. Goose Creek. As I recall, a week later, we all met to head out to our chosen spot. We had trouble finding Goose Creek Road in the dark, and uh, we missed our turn and ended up near Peru. As we were in three separate cars, we had pulled over in the parking lot of a granary to get our bearings. That's when we realized we'd forgotten several necessary items for our little misadventure. One car of kids opted to drive around and approach random houses under the pretense of a Christian youth group scavenger hunt to collect the basic items we'd forgotten. Once we had figured out where we were, it was easy enough to make our way back to the long, pothole drive to the graveled lot that sat above Goose Creek. The road further was blocked by a still barrier. The old roadway itself, eaten up by vegetation growing up through the cracks in the pavement, with years of runoff on either side eating away at the old road till it was but a sliver of its former self. It was dark, overcast, with black, ominous clouds, and the evening's high priest stayed behind with one other while I marched the rest of the group down the hill to what awaited below. What do I remember most from that night? The inverted pentagram framing the full moon overhead, of course. The roadway covered with dead fish. The fumbling of the invocation. The circle of protection being inadvertently broken. Way to go, Andy. A frightened teenage girl whispering, Oh God! And a sinister reply, Your God can't help you now. and screams, lots of screams. Almost 40 years later, and that evening is still just as fresh in my mind as it was the day after. 
was a defining moment. I went from dabbling in the paranormal to becoming a serious student, practitioner, and investigator of unseen forces and all those many things that go bump in the night. It's been a long road filled with countless thrills and chills along the way, but that road always leads back to Goose Creek in the heart of the Miss Cinewall Reservoir, back to where it all began on a cold autumn night, with the blood moon piercing the darkness and the haunting memory of what happened there. On another occasion, on one dark and moonlit night in the autumn of 1986, we'd gone out to Goose Creek, the site of our infamous misadventure in conjuring a preternatural entity. To our surprise, the circles were still there, baked into the roadway despite several seasons underwater. The site looked the same, with the spindly corpses of long dead trees pointing upward like accusing fingers of the damned. To be honest, we were all on edge. The sight felt wrong, you know what I mean? As we kicked around the exposed road and stared into creek waters from the edge of the expanse where the bridge once stretched across it, we sensed we were being watched. Then, one of my friends spotted something along the tree line. Red glowing eyes and dark shapes, black against black. There must have been a half dozen, maybe as many as nine. It was hard to say for sure. It was so dark. Yes, there was a substantial moon, but it was also overcast, and the woods were thick with a canopy of twisted limbs and branches overhead, and sparse autumn foliage still clinging here and there. The creatures were big, low to the ground, certainly canine. They moved silently at first, then you could hear their breathing as they became agitated. We moved slowly, eyes intent on these nocturnal predators up the road. Our pace quickened and then the growl came, fierce, aggressive, fearsome. Suddenly, one of our number bolted, racing up the causeway hill. The growls became a terrifying cacophony and these wolves gave chase. We all turned tail and ran with the sort of urgency reserved for those facing imminent death. At the road's headway was a barricade put up by the DNR and to keep folks from driving down the lane. We all hurtled the obstruction and dove into our vehicles. But then, looking back, there were no wolves to be seen. Only the black maw of the road leading down to Goose Creek, framed by the autumn trees that created a tunnel from one world to another. The official stance of the Indiana Department of Natural Resources is that there is currently no breeding population of wolves in the Hoosier State. Hadn't been in 100 years. Well, I would beg to differ. Goose Creek is a magical place. One that I hold very close to my heart. There's a strangeness there. Something ancient. I've written about it in my fiction and I've shared the stories that have occurred to me and my friends over the years. In October, it will have been 40 years since all this began. Here's to 40 more.